Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to our North Seven Side online weekly service. And I'd like to begin by wishing you all a very happy new year. Let's hope that 2021 brings light and hope after what has been a very difficult year for everyone. As some of you may be aware, living in Newport here in Wells, we are in tier four and are in total lockdown with a stay at home instruction. And that is why I have been unable to join you over these past few weeks. Hopefully things will ease and along with the vaccine, we will soon be able to enjoy our freedom once again. This week's service comes from St Mary's with the gospel reading from Luke focusing on the presentation of Christ in the temple, a feast we will celebrate at the end of January. Following Christmas, we are in the season of Epiphany, the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles. The child who has been manifested to the Magi, the wise men, uh, and is now recognised by Simeon and Anna when he comes to be presented in the temple according to the law of Israel. He is both a light to lighten the Gentiles and the, and the glory of God's people Israel. David Bone's address focuses on another man of old, John Wycliffe, who has strong local connection with us here in our parishes, particularly with Ost. And he, in his day, like us, had to, uh, had to deal with a very difficult situation. Uh, like us with COVID, he had to overcome the pandemic of the Black Death. We begin our service with the hymn, As With Mad Gladness, men of old. God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. God our Father, you sent your Son, full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of the Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray in the peace of this Christmas celebration that our joy in the birth of Christ will last forever. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear the Gospel of the Lord according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. This reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. Jesus is presented in the temple. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he saw him, had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and the sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee 
to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the year 1362, an internationally respected English theologian established a connection with Ost Chapel. This connection resulted from his part-time appointment to the religious foundation of Westbury College in the north of Bristol as prebend of Ost, that's a sort of minor canon, and at that time Ost Chapel belonged to Westbury. The income this chap received from Ost provided a modest contribution to funding the work which was to make him such an important and controversial figure in the life of the English church at that time, and also to leave behind him an important legacy. His name was John Wycliffe. Wycliffe, Wycliffe was born about 1360, ordained probably about, the, sorry, born in, 19, in 1330, ordained in about 1360, and in the course of a very successful career, he became well known in academic and government circles even. Since 1349, that's just over a decade before Wycliffe's contact with Westbury, England had been devastated by the Black Death pandemic. With Bristol well in the van and still struggling to resume normal living. So Wycliffe was a man who knew all about life's insecurity. And already it was beginning to be apparent that the Black Death would lead to major radical change in the nation's life. Wycliffe became increasingly concerned about the need for radical change in the life of the church as well. Too many things hampered people's understanding of the gospel rather than enabling them to live by it. And his message struck a chord with people from a variety of backgrounds. But there, I'm afraid, were lots of opposed, opposing vested interests as well. Amongst his enemies were those who, poor chap, after he died in Leicestershire, his bones were dug up 20 years later and thrown into a river, the River Swift, which flows into the Avon, which flows into the Severn, which comes down past Ost, where he'd been in the Preben. Never mind that, there are three aspects of his work which illustrate it, what he most cared about. He was passionately concerned with the church's practice and the message which was insufficiently reflected in biblical teaching and the writing of the early church fathers. And it was too heavily influenced by matters which had been added over the centuries, which he wanted to get back to the original. And he felt that the more that people of all backgrounds could know and understand the Bible in their own language, not in Latin, understand their own language for themselves, the better it would be for them. And that became the cause for which he's best known and remembered. Secondly, he felt strongly that organisationally, there was a wide gulf between the public face of the church in the world and the true reality of the church as the body of Christ on earth. For example, two centuries earlier, had been radical, fresh initiatives which had revitalised the church. I'm thinking of monasticism in particular. Over time, they'd also generated huge influence and resources and had become a little bit set in their ways. And Wycliffe was not the only critic who felt that the funds associated with monastic foundations could be more widely and beneficially shared. But what brought the full weight of the church's wrath upon him was his questioning of the understanding of the mass as then offered to people. 
and his teaching was viewed as an attack on the church at the most sacred point in its life. And he was quite wrongly accused of devaluing the Holy Sacrament itself. And as a result, Wycliffe lost all positions of influence and lived out the remainder of his time in a little parish in Leicestershire, Lutterworth, still advocating change and increasingly preoccupied with the need for an English translation of the Bible, not in Latin, let alone the original Greek. The pressure on Wycliffe was enormous, but his courage was unshakable, and the potential threat to his life was very real. But what Wycliffe also had was the strong personal loyalty and support of a group of close friends and followers who valued his spiritual leadership and who in due course ensured the completion and publication of an English translation of the New Testament at least. The distribution of copies, each laboriously written by hand, this is before the days of printing, was a strictly illegal exercise. And ownership of a written out gospel also carried severe penalties. But the extent to which these copies were cherished is reflected in the number which survived. Go to a lot of Oxford and Cambridge colleges, and many of them have got a copy. And Bristol and Gloucestershire, in particular, were important locations for Wycliffe's message and uh, of his followers, whom we know later as the Lollards. Now, today, a translation of the Wycliffe Bible is available in modern English. I have to say it's not always an easy read, but it's fascinating how phrases in the Wycliffe Bible can suddenly provide a new perspective on familiar texts. In today's Gospel reading, for example, we're familiar with Simeon's comment to Mary on the pain to come, a sword will pierce your heart. The Wycliffe version puts it more strongly. A sword shall pass through thine own soul, is how Wycliffe puts it. My favourite bit of Wycliffe is the translation of the phrase, do not be afraid. Remember the angel's message, do not be afraid, the message to the shepherds. In Wycliffe it reads, nil ye dread, nil ye dread. Dread, rather than fear, is a very powerful concept. But in the time of Jesus, and also in the circumstances of that death, dread was a familiar and lived reality for many. But nil ye dread, giving way to joy, as the angels had said, was a remarkable message of hope and reassurance in their circumstances. So perhaps it's worth pondering also in our current circumstances today in this pandemic we're suffering from. Nearly ye dread. Do we really believe it? Shall we stand to declare our faith in God? We, we believe in God, God our Father, Father from, from whom every, every family in heaven and, and on earth, earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. A new year is upon us. Many of us will look forward to the new year and hope that it will be better than the last. Some of us may make New Year resolutions, some of us may even carry them out. But perhaps the biggest difference we can make 
is to pray, trusting that our Heavenly Father loves each of us and wants our very best. We can all pray for the world, for our leaders, pray for ourselves and for each other. So let's pray. When I say, O oh Lord, I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our leaders, spiritual and political, at work, at home and at school. All our leaders, wherever they are. Strengthen Viv and Lee, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. O Lord, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, and her ministers. Give wisdom to all those in authority. Especially we pray for the government that they would lead us wisely in the way we address the pandemic and Brexit. Direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray too for our leaders close to home, our employers or teachers, and parents, those who can affect our daily lives directly. We pray that you inspire those who lead us to do so with fairness and care, in loving kindness, in ways that will direct us well. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you for our gifted healers, for those who work as doctors and nurses and support staff in the NHS, those who work as carers and all those who comfort and support others. We ask you, Father, our ultimate healer, to comfort and support, encourage and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We pray especially for those unexpectedly separated from their loved ones at this time of the year. Give each of them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. And now a prayer for ourselves. Help us, Lord, to see how we may best serve our families and friends and all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Word made flesh, life of the world, in your incarnation you embraced our poverty. By your spirit, may we share in your riches. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks to the earth. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who for love of our fallen race humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord, holy Lord, God, God power and might, might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation, that they may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last, with all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that light is the life of the world. God, hear us, light, light in, in the midst, midst of us, bring us, us to light and life. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, Lord give, give us, us this bread, bread always. always. Hello everyone, I hope 
you had a lovely Christmas and I wish you all have a very happy new year. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
Father who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, Glory thanks, and praise, praise to God. God.